Jean-Claude Romand was born in 1954 to adoring parents in France. The attention they gave their son would lead him to compensate for his failures by claiming success even when there was none. His life took a turn down a dark road during medical school when he decided to sleep in rather than take a second year exam. This guy is about to throw away his whole life and live a lie for the whole, almost the whole rest of his life just because he decided to sleep in one time. Unable to tell his parents about the apparent laziness of their golden child, he pretended he had taken the exam and passed. He told his parents that he passed this exam and he also told his friends at the medical school that he had taken and passed the exam. He eventually had a fake medical school graduation and bragged about getting a great job as a medical researcher for the World Health Organization. So this guy's in medical school doing fine until one day he decides to, to sleep in rather than take an exam. And so now he's lying to everyone about having taken and passed this exam. He's telling his parents and his friends. Now he also is pretending to graduate from medical school and somehow organizes a fake medical school graduation. And at the graduation, he even builds on this lie by saying he is using this medical school degree to get a job as a medical researcher for the World Health Organization. I mean, where is this headed? He soon met and married Florence Crowled and immediately began leaving the house every morning as if he was going to work for the World Health Organization. Little did his wife know, he was just taking naps in the car and going for walks. Sometimes, he would go on a business trip, or what he called a business trip, and during this time, what he would actually do was drive to the local airport and pick up souvenir items from shops and then take them home to his family. He lived such a detailed lie that he said he never invited co-workers home because he preferred to keep his professional and private lives separate. His wife might have had an inkling that something was off, but she was having a hard time putting her finger on it because she said that one day she was going to be surprised and find out that he was actually a spy. The couple had a daughter named Carolina in 1985 and a boy named Antoine in 1987. Jean-Claude once drove his children to the World Health Organization building and pointed to a window and said, that's my office. In fact, sometimes Jean-Claude did spend time at the World Health Organization building using their free informational services and simply walking around the building. All right, so this guy has no job. He does not have a medical degree. He just walks around all day long, but somehow he is supporting a wife and two kids now to the extent that they think he is earning a medical doctor's income. So how, how is he pulling this off? To support the financial role of a doctor's life, Jean-Claude told friends, relatives, and in-laws that as a World Health Organization doctor, he had privileged access to Swiss investments with high rates of return. Truly believing that Jean-Claude was a respected and honest doctor and did have access to these investments, a number of people gave him their life savings to invest. Jean-Claude, having no access to such investments, used this money to support himself and his family in a wealthy manner. So he was just stealing from these people. His first murder was, perhaps, the killing of his own father, who requested to withdraw some of the money 
that his father had invested with Jean-Claude. Though never proven to have murdered his father, Jean-Claude was the only witness to the accident in which his father died. After the death, Jean-Claude's mother sold their large house that she lived in and bought a small apartment. She gave Jean-Claude the remaining money from the sale of the house, which further enabled his life of fraud. So now Jean-Claude has a ton of time on his hands. He has plenty of money. He has his family and friends completely snowed. And so what's next? A mistress. And of course, Jean-Claude immediately scammed her. She gave him 900,000 francs, which was about a million US dollars at the time, to invest. For a man who never finished medical school or even had a job, Jean-Claude raked in money quite well. Four years later, she wanted her investment back, which of course Jean-Claude could not do. He could not give her money back because he had spent it. At the same time that she was asking for her money back, one of Jean-Claude's friends acquired a list of World Health Organization staff phone numbers and was shocked that Jean-Claude's name was not on the list. Paranoid about lying to his family every time he spoke to them and knowing the next phone call or knock on the door could be his downfall, Jean-Claude could see his demise getting closer. On January 9th, 1993, Jean-Claude made a bank withdrawal and planned to buy a gun with the money, but quickly changed his mind, donated the money to a homeless man. Even so, he still saw his end nearing and decided that he would get rid of his family without them knowing he was a fraud and also collect their life insurance money. He made another withdrawal at a later time this one for 2,000 francs, and this time he did purchase a gun. He also purchased a suppressor, which I think is a silencer, and gas canisters, and asked for them to be gift-wrapped so no one would know what he had bought. He held on to these murder weapons for two days, waiting for his daughter's eighth birthday. That night, after celebrating, Jean-Claude gave his daughter the sinister gift of murdering her mother by bashing in his wife's head with a rolling pin as she slept. With his wife dead and blood splattered all over the walls and sheets, Jean-Claude slept soundly and then he awoke the next morning and watched cartoons with the two children. Sadly, that would be the children's last day alive. When they went to sleep that night, their father shot them both in the head. He then slept in the house another night, his wife's body no doubt beginning to smell. The following morning, John claude had two more people on his list of victims. His own mother and the mistress who wanted her 900,000 franc investment returned. Via investments or insurance, all of Jean Claude's victims were sources of income. He drove to his mother's house that evening and had dinner with her. Immediately after eating, he shot her repeatedly and even killed her dog. Later that night, he picked up his mistress under the guise of going out for a romantic dinner. On the way, he pretended his car had broken down and got out to work on the engine. He told her to also get out of the car and attempted to strangle her with a cord and spray tear gas in her face. However, she fought back. Surprisingly, he apologized to her and they both got back into the car and he simply took her home. Back at his house, the three bodies of his wife and children decomposing nearby, he watched television both before performing his final crime of setting the house on fire. He poured petrol, which is gasoline, all around the house and set it on fire. Flames ablaze, he swallowed an excessive amount of expired sleeping pills 
but was rescued by firefighters at 4 a.m. At first, Jean-Claude refused to talk to police, but they thought he was just too traumatized to talk. This man's house had just burned up, and his wife and children were inside the house and dead. Of course, the police or firemen had not yet had a chance to discover that each of the bodies had a bullet hole. However, the police later discovered that Jean-Claude had a strong motive to commit these acts of murder and that he was living a lie and was not a doctor. The testimony of the mistress whom he tried to kill combined with his dead mother and his house being set on fire and his entire family being dead all contributed to him being sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 22 years in jail. Jean-Claude's trial was in 1996, so he was paroled in 2018 and they released him to a monastery. Maybe he's still in the monastery or maybe he's out there starting a new family. All right, that's it for this time. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please remember to like the video. It helps other people discover it. And remember to subscribe so you can check out the next episode. Have a good one.